Hey guys, what's up? I'm Captain Mike and welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. Uh, hope everybody had a wonderful and safe holiday weekend. Happy July 4th, a little bit late, but better late than never. Uh, want to bring you up to speed on a couple things real quick and then we're going to get into our topic. Something really neat that I want to talk to you about here. But again, I just want to bring you up to speed. Florida Sport Fishing TV, we are currently airing on World Fishing Network. We've transitioned from Bally Sports, which used to be Fox Sports, and we're now airing Florida Sport Fishing TV on World Fishing Network through December, and then in January, we'll be transitioning to the Sportsman Channel through July. So that will be our schedule every year. We're gonna maintain a 52 week a year schedule, uh, some of those episodes, of course, are going to be repeats, and of course, there'll be new shows uh, once the new season kicks off in January, uh, but that's what it's going to be. Six months World Fishing Network, July through December, and then again, Sportsman Channel, uh, January through June. Now, in conjunction with Florida Sport Fishing TV, we're also launching a new television series, and I know you guys are gonna love this. It's titled Captain Mike's Rigging Station, really hardcore, legit info that's gonna help you be a more successful angler inshore and off across Florida and beyond. Really, really informational, raw, unscripted, not like anything else that's out there. Um, and like I said, I'm real excited about this series and I know you're gonna enjoy it. And that's gonna start in January as well on Bally Sports. So we'll actually have two shows simultaneously airing on multiple different networks. So that'll be a first for us and certainly a, a heck of an accomplishment, something I've been working for for many, many years. And to finally put all of the pieces together, I'm Pretty stoked, you know, so we'll see how that all comes together. Uh, in the meantime, of course, we've got Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus, and keep in mind, you're going to have the ability to view all of our new content before anybody else. So you will get that opportunity. You'll get notifications letting you know that a new episode from a new season um, is airing, and you'll see it before it's even on TV, but that's still months away. Instructional stuff, I'm not gonna stop, I'm not. It's just what I do, it's in my nature. Every week I'm gonna sit here and talk to you about different topics and different techniques and different species and really share just a lot of insight with you and a lot of information because I want you to be successful. I want you to go out there and catch as you know, many fish as you possibly can. Of course, be conservation minded, but nobody likes to go out and come home with a big fat donut, which means zero and get frustrated. We all wanna you know, be successful on the water. And that's what Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus is really all about. It's about shortening that learning curve. Today's topic, really interesting. It's somewhat, we'll say simple, but there's so much to it, right? What you see in my hands is I've got a hard plastic bait. It's a hard plastic stick bait from Nomad. Doesn't matter, you know, this is the Nomad Shikari. It's quickly becoming my favorite hard plastic stick bait. Uh, but this, is, this isn't particularly about the brand or the lure. It's more about the question of, hey, when do I fish that hard plastic stick bait versus something like this Nomad Ridgeback long cast, a metal lure, a metal jig. When, when do I go in this direction and why the hard plastic? When do I go with the metal jig and why? So let's talk a little bit about them. You know, understand that really, you should be well adapted and really good at fishing both styles of lures because different applications, different venues, different species are gonna require different techniques and different products. So it's always a good idea to be really, you know, dialed in on fishing the soft plastic stick baits and on fishing the metal lures as well. So just keep that in mind. I'm not going to imply that one is better than the other. They're different. They're different tools in a different drawer in your toolbox. And you have to know when to turn to each and why. So let's talk about some of the obvious factors, right? On the hard plastic bait, it's very light, relatively speaking. We're not talking about 
ounces, you know, we're, it's just light. We're talking about grams, right? It's very light. And certainly these come in various sizes, okay? Uh, this one is the 145, just to give you an example. You can see it's probably five or so inches long, relatively light, has a small lip right in the front right there, a very unique body shape, very, very unique. It's not, I don't want to say not necessarily tubular, it is tubular, obviously, but and long and slender, but it's flared. The sides, the sides are flared right here. It almost has this real distinct, what appears to be a lateral line going down the side. Um, the shape of the head, you know, none of this is by accident. Understand that. That a tremendous amount of time, effort, design went into perfecting these baits in order for you to have a great experience. Obviously, manufacturers don't want you to go out and to be unsuccessful with their lures. They want you to go out and to be very successful with their artificial baits. So, you know, again, a lot of effort went into this. It's got a, a scaly pattern right there. It looks incredibly realistic. Almost some like gill rakers or it's flared out, gill plates, 3D eyes. Really a cool looking bait, no question. And you know, anywhere, anywhere you are in just about any ocean, this mimics some sort of prevalent forage. If it's a ballyhoo, a flying fish, a silver side, some sort of herring, some sort of scad. It just looks like a bait fish and very likely will work in every ocean around the world for just a you know, wide variety of species. But again, it's relatively light. What does that mean? Even though there's a weight transfer system inside here, listen to this. You hear that right there? I don't know if that's one or multiple bearings or some sort of weight magnets in there, whatever it is, and they transfer. So on the cast, okay, obviously you're tied to the front of the lure. On the cast, this lure is going to cast a relatively long distance. Certainly an impressive distance for a lure of this size and weight because of that internal casting system, that weight transfer system. Then on the retrieve, those weights that we're in the back to help get that distance now transition more toward the front of the lure and that allows that plastic stick bait to have some crazy action in the water the body rolls the lure swims side to side and that's just with a steady retrieve so a really versatile really cool bait again not about specifically this nomad shikari it's about stick baits in general and freshwater, saltwater, inshore, offshore, we're all fishing stick baits. If you haven't or you're not, you're missing the boat somewhere along the line. But this one in particular is just really a great lure. Really, really impressed with this. Now, next to it is our metal lure. Because again, we just talked about the characteristics of that plastic bait, that hard plastic bait. Now we're going to transition to this long cast ridgeback. Okay, and again, it's approximately the same size, four or five inches. Certainly mimics any type of forage anywhere. You know, it's got that blue back, silvery belly. Okay, you got some spots on the back there for a little bit more pizzazz, a little more, I don't know, shine, whatever it may be. Okay, um, again, if you look at this lure closely, it has that scaly pattern, even on here, that reflects a tremendous amount of light, but it's a smooth bait. It's not coarse like the plastic bait. It's a very, very smooth bait. Now, it too has a very unique body shape. And again, I want to stress this didn't happen by accident. It's got almost like a triangular shape. I don't, I, don't know, I don't even know if triangular is the right word, but just a very, very unique shape. It tapers as it goes back, um, not only in width, but in the, in the height of the lure. Okay, The body itself tapers as it goes back. It's got this unique transition under the chin right there, um, almost in the you know, kind of throat area, so to speak, and then transitions back here. Okay, and comes up on an angle. So that lure, and also, by the way, 
three DIs, some impressions there for gill plates and gill rakers. Looks like a live little sardine or again, a small little mackerel. I mean, one of just countless little bait fish uh, all over the world. So both of them, the soft hard plastic and the metal lure right out of the gate, both do a great job, the shikari and the ridgeback, both do a great job at mimicking natural forage, right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to match the hatch. And if you wanna go with lures, you know, that really the, the paint scheme really matches the prevalent forage in your area, certainly that's not a bad idea. Golds and yellows, if menhaden and pogies are prominent, you know, would make a good, a good copy of that. Uh, like I said, that almost looks like a little mackerel or bullet bonita kind of pattern with blues and silvers and a little black thrown in there. So, but there are all sorts. These lures come in all sorts of different color patterns, um, different lengths, different weights. Just for, you know, again, for display purposes, what we're talking about is the 145 Shikari and the 100 gram on the uh, Ridgeback Longcast. I'm gonna have both of these. I'm gonna have them both in my tackle bag, in my on my boat, very likely rigged and ready on a rod. And I can fish both of these. I, and I'm remember, I'm primarily fishing offshore salt water. So I'm not in the back country looking for snook and redfish or sea trout. I'm offshore. I'm looking for blackfin tuna, dolphin, a wide variety of bottom species, uh, skipjacks up on top. Bonitas are a lot of fun to catch. Again, pretty much all predatory fish on or near the surface. And then of course on the bottom, I'm targeting a wide variety of snappers and groupers uh, with some other crazy stuff mixed in, African pompanos, cobias, and all of these species eat bait fish. They all do. So having rods rigged with these, it really just leaves me ready for any scenario. Now, if I'm fishing shallow water, this obviously is gonna be my bait of choice, right? Because it's a slow floating lure, so that means it's not going to go very deep. So I really need to be targeting something in the shallow water or some sort of predator that's feeding on or near the surface. It could even be a school of mahis offshore. This is a great bait to throw along a weed line. I would switch out those trebles for single hooks, maybe even just put one single hook in the back there and remove that forward treble altogether. And that'd be a great little dolphin bait up along weed lines and stuff. Um, but it's gonna be a little challenging to throw if there's any sort of headwind. And if you're throwing it into a headwind or trying to get any real, real distance, that's gonna be a tough bait to throw. But again, I have to stress in the shallows, calmer days, when fish are on or near the surface, if you're looking for a bait that you can present slowly, methodically, with tremendous action, that's it right there. Okay, mackerel are gonna be all over that thing. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You can throw that out along the patch reefs and whiz it back to the boat. I don't think you're gonna make it back to the boat once without it getting crushed. The Spanish mackerels, king mackerels, Ciro uh, mackerels, they all love those long, slender, shiny bait fish type of lures uh, moving fast, and you can do that with this, even in that shallow water. It'll remain true, it'll you know track properly. So it's a great bait for that as well. But again, shallower water, slower presentation. Those are really the key factors that I'm gonna consider when picking this bait up, reduced casting distance. It'll still cast a country mile, but not, not like the Ridgeback. This thing right here is a bullet. That's the bottom line. It is a bullet. Just look at that thing. And I know I haven't even thrown this yet. I literally just, just got these and unboxing them and it inspired me to really talk to you about the differences here. But I'm telling you what, I don't care if I'm fishing off the beach, if I'm fishing off a boat, off a pier, if I'm looking for great castability and distance, that's the bait that I'm gonna choose right there. There's no question. It doesn't even compare to a soft plastic bait, okay? It's just that little rocket ship type of design. It's so aerodynamic that you will be able to throw this 
I, I mean, I just cannot even imagine. And keep in mind that I'm fishing all of these plugs on an eight foot graphite rod. I like the extra length because it gives me that extra distance to throw these types of lures, the hard plastic stick baits, poppers that I'm throwing up along weed lines, the metal ridge back, a Shimano Twin Power 8000, 20 pound monofilament, it's what I fish on here. I like the elasticity of the monofilament when I'm fishing offshore and I'm throwing these types of baits. I don't get any wind knots because of course the braid, so I'm not fishing braid and getting any wind knots. Not that that's a huge issue, but it certainly affects some people. Um, just much easier all around and my preference when it comes to fishing these kind of baits, like I said, is just that monofilament. So, and there's nothing better than that Shimano Twin Power. I mean, the Stella, its sister, the Stella, might be the only thing that even compares. Um, but a very comfortable outfit, very light, very sensitive, long, long butt section, all right, to where the reel is, so I could really just whiz these lures a great, great distance and cover a lot of ground because, look, every second that this bait's not in the water is one second that I'm not catching anything. That's really the bottom line. So again, distance, if I'm looking to canvas a large area, that's a great bait. If I'm looking to get up on a fish, or I believe there's some fish in an area, but I don't want to spook them, so I don't want to get too close to them, that's a great bait and a great choice. I can throw this thing at floating debris from... I don't know, 10 boat lengths away, you know, just really a great distance. So I'm not spooking anything that, you know, I'm potentially throwing at. I could let it sink in the water column. Many days offshore, you know, you'll get those tunas and it'll be busting on the surface, but then boom, they sound. They go down deeper, they're chasing baits, and being able to fish that same lure and just letting it sink in the water column, and it'll sink fast, it's going to allow me to stay on the bite. It's gonna allow me to keep my bait in the water for a maximum period of time and to just be an all around more effective fisherman, no question. Yes, there are times when those fish are on the surface and they want something that's on or near the surface, great choice. However, when they want something that's deeper in the water column, there it is, that's what I'm gonna throw. So another, good, you know, another big advantage, but it's a disadvantage being able to sink so fast is a disadvantage in shallow water because if I don't move that lure, it's going to sink like a rock. And if it's shallow, look, I risk getting hung up in the bottom, I risk fouling, the lure just sitting on the bottom isn't doing anybody any good. So I've gotta take depth into consideration. I have to take the skill level of the angler who's fishing. Maybe I have a guest on the boat and I feel like a metal ridgeback might require a little bit more, you, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more, uh, you know, work from the user, right? You've just got to be able to twitch it a little bit faster, move it a little bit faster, because you could really work this thing really erratically. So, you know, again, if it's somebody with a little bit of a higher skill level, that'd be a fantastic bait. If it's a newcomer, you can't beat a soft plastic. All I got to do is throw it and reel it. Just throw it and reel it. And essentially, you could do the same with this as well. Um, but you can twitch it. And I guess that's really, you know, both of these. You can work these lures as smoothly or as erratically as you would like to. And sometimes that's what it takes to get that fish to bite is something out of the ordinary. You're not just reeling that bait in, you're twitching it side to side, the bait's rolling. Some of these baits will almost do a 180, you know, when you twitch it and their whole body will roll and turn. And of course, you can almost fish that ridge back somewhat like a slow pitch jig right off the bottom. You can bounce it, you can whiz it through the water column at a high rate of speed. You can yo-yo it up and down. I mean, all sorts of different things that you could do with that bait. It's got phenomenal action below the surface. So at the end of the day, I think there is no right answer. You know, there is no, hey, what's a better lure? Is it the hard plastic stick bait or is it the metal lure? No, it's not which is which. They're just two different tools for two different scenarios. And you should know how to fish both of these effectively. And you should carry a variety of 
soft plastic stick baits, or I should say hard plastic stick baits. If I said soft plastic at any time, I was incorrect. It's hard plastic. And then of course the metal lures, cause they just have different characteristics. They're designed for different purposes. Is there crossover where you could fish both of them? Yes. Are there species that will eat either of these lures? Yes. That's the bottom line. But at the end of the day, they were not designed to accomplish the same thing. You're gonna get more castability, greater distance from the ridgeback. You're gonna be able to fish this lure deeper in the water column and through much deeper water. That's probably key ingredient number one right there, you know, the differences. Whereas something like this shikari, you're gonna be able to fish it slower, more methodically, and in shallower water real shallow this lure you're not going to get this bait to swim more than i don't know two three feet below the surface okay and then from there it'll slowly oops from there it'll slowly fo float up okay so you really can't fish that very deep at all whereas you can with the ridgeback so those are just a couple of the you know differences that come to mind you can fish them on the same rod. However, keep in mind something with a faster, you know, something with a whippier tip is gonna help you cast a lighter bait a greater distance, maybe even line that's a little bit lighter. Something a little bit heavier, you can get away with a little bit of a heavier outfit because you have more momentum to throw through the air. So remember that it's also all about balance. It's not just about the lure, it's also about the rod, the line, the reel, the leader, and of course, bulletproof connections. You know, your knots are vital because all of this would just be in vain if you had premature tackle failure and lost the quality fish because of a poorly tied knot, okay? Um, so that's it, you know, again, I can't stress enough. As offshore fishermen, you know, we want the edge, no matter what we're doing, no matter what we're fishing for. And sometimes it isn't as easy as just choice A or B in order to get that edge. Sometimes it's A and B equal the edge. So keep that in mind.